Yeah, so we're the official communication partners. I mean, uh, we're from a company called Doctor, and mm-hmm. it's a global collaboration platform, just like LinkedIn and Facebook, mm-hmm. but exclusively for the medical community. Mm-hmm. So till this point in time, uh, there wasn't a safe space for a doctor or a researcher to kind of go into without the patient being involved and share their experiences, be it on a day-to-day basis or the mm-hmm. research that they're working on. So we've literally built this platform so that people can stay connected and share their experiences so that an abundance of opportunities can then come out as a result of that. Yeah. And it's not just limited to the doctors, but it also goes right to the doctors, the universities, labs, pharmaceutical companies, hospitals, as well as medical journalists as well. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of an aggregation of the entire medical ecosystem. Okay. Again, keeping the patient outside right now, but we need to create a safe space which allows a doctor or a researcher or a professor to freely express themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and our objective here Our objective here as the official communication partner is to try and capture what's happening here at the event, your experiences of your uh, perception before you came here, how you were invited, mm-hmm. your expectation as well, have those all been captured here at this event, what is the one thing you loved and hated about the event, what do you think we can actually do to make it a much better event next year, because this is a benchmark event, the 13th uh, annual conference, mm-hmm. and next year uh, there's a lot, a lot of pressure as well. Uh, to make sure that we maintain this level of momentum going forward. Uh, so, honest feedback would be really, really appreciated. Um, and this would be shown to uh, the up and coming generation uh, and participants of next year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would probably create a little bit of excitement as well for them to participate in the next year's conference. So, there's a little bit of publicity as well. We would like to know a little bit about yourself as well, where you're from, what type of research do you get involved in and how do you plan to stay connected with people post the event if you have any practices several mm-hmm. meetings here as well. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. makes sense. Any questions for me before we step off? No, that's fine. Perfect, excellent. So can we start the link? Hi, how are you doing today, Sam? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Great to have you here in the city of Delhi. And uh, it's good to know that it's your first time here in Delhi and we hope you get to see the uh, city or some of the artifacts that we have here in Delhi. I hope so too, but it's a very short visit, so I'm afraid I will not see too many tourist things. Hopefully you get to see the India Gate and the Parliament House. That's one spot you should definitely go okay. to if you have a little bit of time. It's okay. hardly about 30 to 45 minutes away from here. Mm-hmm. If you do get a little window of opportunity, definitely go and see those yeah. signs. So can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and you know what brought you to this conference this year? My name is Hans Evers. I'm a gynecologist from Maastricht, the Netherlands. And I was a practicing gynecologist till three years ago, and then I took over the editorship of Human Reproduction, which is the major journal in our field. So I'm editor-in-chief now for uh, more than three years. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why I visit a lot of conferences. I think I was invited here because of my previous research work. We investigated a lot about endometriosis and about IVF. And I was specifically asked to deal with that at this meeting. Apart from giving lectures to younger researchers how to publish their research, their research. it's very difficult for a, per- a person who is not familiar with the tradition of science publishing mm-hmm. to ex- express himself in the correct way. Mm-hmm. And there are many papers that, res- that are received at human reproduction, for example, that do not qualify because they have the wrong structure. So we had a pre-congress course here on uh, structuring your research, nice. your manuscript, mm-hmm. and that was very successful, I think. That's great. You know, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that a lot of scientific writers face. Yeah. And I have been spoke, like I spoke to quite a lot of people, and one of the issues that they also find is there's no technology support in terms of how do they actually get their work published. There's no direct connection with some of the publishers as well. There's no filtering system. So can you tell us a little bit about how is the general process taken right now from what was the publishing journal? Well, the question was asked to me at this pre-congress course as well. How can we get into the top journals? Mm -hmm. And the top journals in our field after human reproduction are fertility sterility. Mm -hmm. And one of these two, you have to get your paper in. And it's, it's, it's very difficult. First, what, what, what editors ask of journals are three questions. Is it new? Mm-hmm. Is it true? And do I care? Mm-hmm. Is it new means, have someone published it before? Is it really something novel and interesting and intriguing? Is it true? Do the methods fit? 
do they, did they do the correct research process? Did they analyze the data correctly? Did they draw the right conclusions from their data? And finally, do I care? Is it important? If it is not important or no one cares, why publish it? Absolutely. So if you want to do good research and you want to end up with your paper in the top quality journals, mm -hmm. it should be something really new, it should be very well investigated mm -hmm. and it should be important. Excellent. I just love these three steps. You know, I think if everybody wrote them down, they would yeah. probably definitely achieve that. And is this process usually, you know, a more interactive process where it's via email or via telephony? Like, what is the current process of communication and all of that? The current process is all by, by internet. Mm -hmm. So what happens is someone writes an article, submits it to our journal. Okay. I see it on the day it comes in. Okay. If I think it's, it's too bad, it's not new or not true or not important, I return it to the, okay. to the writer. If it is one of these three, new, true or important, I send it to a reviewer. Nice. Mostly we take two or three reviewers mm -hmm. and we, we pick specialists from the different fields of interest. Okay. So if it is about male infertility, we pick reviewers on male infertility. If it is about endometriosis, we pick, we pick experts on endometriosis. And we see to it that it's quite balanced, that there are young reviewers and older reviewers, experienced reviewers and new reviewers. So they give a verdict. They return to me as an editor and I balance the verdicts and then I decide whether to continue. If we continue, we try to improve the manuscript, so we help to, to improve the English if the people are from non-English speaking countries. And we, we try to help them to structure their manuscript better for a second round. Most, most manuscripts take two or three rounds before they are acceptable for publication. And that's where we put a lot of effort in. We try to give an answer to someone who submits to our journal in three weeks and then we hope that in another three weeks we can improve the quality so that it is fit for publication. Excellent. So you're looking at about six to eight weeks for publication. That's what our aim is. That's brilliant. And how do you actually, uh, how do people actually reach out? Like what is the current protocol? Like how do people get to know about, you know, uh, the journal? provider as an example right now. What most people do is they go to, to PubMed or to go to, to Google Scholar yeah. and they, mm -hmm. they, they they check what is in reproductive medicine but which okay. are the, the top journals. Mm -hmm. And then they automatically arrive by one of, at one of these two, human yeah. reproduction of fertility sterility, and they try to submit. But many people do, they submit to the top journal yeah. and they don't expect to be accepted but they expect to get good criticism and okay. then they use this criticism to improve their paper and to go to a, 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 a second tier okay. journal and do you, do you also have like uh, a linkedin profile and a facebook profile like the the journal has the twitter feed and has a, a facebook profile okay uh, we, we we publish alerts if there are important articles in the pipeline we publish alerts keep keep an eye on, out for this because it's it, it's an, it's coming and it's important and i have every month i have i'm allowed by the publisher to do the uh, the editor's choice which is a special article for every issue which is freely available mm -hmm. because most of the journals are behind the paywall okay. but this one is freely available to everyone because it is such an exceptional quality and we think everyone should know about it absolutely and um, how, how is the interactivity on like Facebook or why not LinkedIn? I'm just trying to understand the differences. Well, that's, that's, that's I think, my, my defect in understanding social media. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of Facebook and Twitter and I'm not so aware of LinkedIn, but right. okay. that's, that, that, that's personal. No problem. And um, are you socially active on Facebook or LinkedIn on an individual basis? Uh, I'm, I have a Facebook account and I have a Twitter account. Okay. And, uh, I'm, I, I, I know I submitted, uh, I subscribe to LinkedIn, but I don't use it anymore. Sure. And um, how active are you on Facebook, just out of curiosity? Facebook is the least active. I do it once, once, or, tw once or twice in a year. Oh, wow. That's, but that's Twitter I do every day. Awesome. And uh, how do you plan to keep in touch with all the people that you've met? I'm sure you've met awesome people while you've, while you've interacted with uh, people at the event. How do you plan to keep in touch with some of these people? Well, mostly by the traditional way of business cards. I, okay. I, I spend some 200 business cards here and to, okay. if I really hear good presentations, I try to give them my business card and, and stimulate them to submit papers to our journal. Excellent. Because I want our journal to present the best science. Absolutely. And I must say from this meeting, there was really good science 
and really nice work done. So I hope there will be some manuscripts coming our way after this meeting. I hope so as well. Uh, just to wrap this up from a last question perspective, uh, what would you say if there was an exclusive medical community that was built from a technology platform perspective that allowed you to keep in touch and connected, very similar to LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter? So it's just the medical community. We're just keeping the patient outside for now mm -hmm. so that doctors or the entire medical community just feel safe and they can express themselves and share information more effectively. Well, the, the, the direction of developments in Europe is quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. we, we had these, these, these doctors only sites and they are gradually moving towards patient involvement. Mm -hmm. Patient awareness is quite important at the moment and our research uh, financiers, the grant giving bodies, they require nowadays that you do a patient investigation before you do a, a, a trial protocol. Mm -hmm because they want to make sure that patients receive what they want to receive. Mm -hmm. So, from one hand, I think it's very good for a doctor's side that you can exchange ideas mm -hmm. that are not ripe yet mm -hmm. among the doctors. Yeah. But once the ideas are ripe and mature, yeah. then you should have an open site where also patients can be involved. Excellent. So, I think uh, technology definitely has a long uh, way to go in oh, the medical sure. community and uh, we're hoping that the entire collaboration platform that we're building as well mm -hmm. uh, evolves in that similar way. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time and I really well, hope you have a safe journey back home. I'm and, sure. And uh, hopefully our paths cross again shortly. Thank that, you so much. Thank, thank you. you.